Good morning, friends. Welcome back. Okay, so today is probably the last demo session we have. And from tomorrow, we'll be starting the regular classes. Like I said, you, I have to take some classes for you at 7 a.m. itself so that I can prepare you for the, you know, 6 a.m. class. Okay, so after like a couple of days, or so maybe from Monday, I'll move people to 6 a.m. Already, I have, I'm taking classes at 6 a.m. for different groups. And I'll take classes for you till Saturday probably. And I'll move into a different group. Okay. But for that, today is the last demo session. If you're interested, my friend. So you have to register today itself. So that you know you can get a new link tomorrow. And you can continue with the classes. Okay. And in case if you have any, any doubts, any other questions or any other queries regarding course and curriculum and all those things, you can simply contact me. on my mail id so i'm just sharing the mail id there fine now let us try to understand today what is the uh how is the aws global infrastructure design actually we know very well now in cloud we are using resources from a data center and the data center belongs to amazon so we are using the data center resources and we are running our applications Okay, we are running the applications and we are we are storing our data and all those things. But remember the data centers, my friend. They have huge data centers across the globe, right? AWS people have huge data centers across the globe. So what we need to know here is where are the data centers located and how to connect to those data centers or on what basis we need to connect actually. How to connect is a very simple thing. It's not a big deal. But what is the reason or how we can decide which particular data center to be connected? That is what we need to understand today okay so the concept for today is aws global infrastructure okay so go to the aws.amazon.com website and here you can see the global infrastructure here now first of all what is it in a data center what components you will see in a data center Go to any data center, like the size of the data center can be very small. Let me just show you some data centers images here. See, this is some data center in some company. You can see size of, size of the data center is a bit small here, right? You can see a couple of racks, there are three racks there. In one rack, it is full actually. See, this is a rack where we have many servers connected. Hmm? Yeah, there are certain devices in this rack like switches and routers and firewalls. So overall, let us say in this data center, there are approximately 50 to 60 devices. Still, it is considered as a small data center. 50, 60 devices is nothing, my friend. If you go with 500, 600 devices, then it is considered as a medium level data center. Okay, so anyhow, this is one data center within a company. It's a private data center. But if you want to see the cloud data center, remember we have seen some cloud data centers there. How big they are, my friend? They are bigger than multiple football grounds or multiple cricket grounds. And see how many racks you can see here now. In the previous data center, we saw only a couple of racks there. Now here you can clearly see some hundreds of racks assembled together. Okay, they are kept in a single place. And by the way, this is not the complete data center image. It is not 360 degree image actually, right? So maybe it is only 10% of this actual data center size. So here, see, if you just go and take this particular uh, rack here, only this one rack, maybe there are like 20 to 25 servers in this rack. So imagine thousands of racks. So the number of servers can be in lakhs. So this is your physical data center from where uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, all these companies are providing cloud services. See, to maintain this data center, see, a server will generate a lot of heat. Like, for example, if you use your mobile phone for two, two to three hours continuously, it will generate some heat. If you use your laptop or desktop for like some hours continuously, it will generate some heat. These are the servers, my friend. Servers will not be shut down so easily. Without a proper reason, servers will not go down. It will not be shut down. So servers are running continuously for days, weeks, even for months without shutting down. 
So when this many number of servers are running together in one place, just imagine how much heat they would generate. So obviously they have a cooling system. If you go with the smallest data center, the data center which we saw before, there also there will be some proper cooling system and a size of this data center. Just imagine how good will be the cooling system, my friend. The servers should be run in a cool temperature. Then only the server's performance will be better. If your server, if you're running a server in a very hot and humid condition, then you know server performance will go down. Server can hang. Server will not respond, and even server can get burn. You might have seen news, or you might have seen many cases where you know someone is using laptop for like eight to ten hours, and the laptop has burn. You may get flames. Just imagine if one server is burning here, the fire can spread so easily to the other servers, right? So just see how much, how many precautions they will take now. If the server is burning, they cannot put water on it first of all, right? Okay, so the cooling system should be perfect. Anyhow, so this is the data center where we have components like Let me just decrease the size. We have components like physical server, hmm? physical storage, physical router, physical switch, physical firewall. And all these things are connected by using a cable. Each and every device what you see here. Each and every rack and each and every server is connected by using a physical cable. Let me take a different data center where I can show you the cables also. Yeah, the same one. See, he is trying to connect a server there. We have already seen this. But if you want to go and check the cables here, can you see the cables are clearly visible here, my friend? The green color one, these are the cables here. The yellow color one are also cables here. The orange color one are also cables here. So see, they are using cables to connect all the devices together. Without cables, connections are not possible. Wireless is very limited technology and it is not so advanced and it is not having good speed. You should have proper speed between servers so that they can transfer data. So that they can provide services to the users. Okay. So cables will be used in every data center. So just imagine my friend, a size of this data center is like, you know, bigger than 20 football grounds or 15 football grounds. How much cable they have to use. Okay. So they will build everything for us done and they will provide you these services so what services they are providing now they are providing services of all these resources in a virtual form but again the question here is it's up to you and me to select any amazon data center the data centers are located in different cities and different countries and continents across the globe so how we can select first of all we should know where are they located then we can see how we we can select okay so technically in AWS, we call it as region. There are two very important terminologies we need to understand here, my friend. One is a region and other one is your availability zone. So let us see what is a region here first. Region means a city, a country or a geographical place. See, you can see the complete map here. Hmm? If I just keep my cursor on this particular green dot, you can see Hyderabad. And there is one more in our country that is Mumbai. So within our country, India, Amazon people have two regions. Mumbai region, which was established in the year 2016. And the Hyderabad region, we started working in the year 2022. 2022 means only two years before Hyderabad region started working. Amazon people started providing services from Hyderabad region. If you go on some other region, Cape Town, it came in 2020. If you go to Melbourne, 2023 last year only my friend a continent or a city like australia it got a region in 2023 but you can see one more region here this is your sydney region it was launched in the year 2012 so what is a region region is a geographical place where amazon people have the data center so they call it as a region so as of now 
November, uh, September 2024. As of now in Amazon, there are totally 34 geographical regions, my friend. You can see all the geographical regions clearly there. In our country, there are two. But overall, across the globe, how many regions are there? 34 geographical regions are there. And AWS people started providing cloud services from this particular region. Northern Virginia region that they have launched in the year 2006. It started providing services in the year 2006. This is the oldest region. Or this is the first region. Okay, so then later on, they have added more regions. So 2006 or 2024, in 18 years, they have expanded their global infrastructure up to 34 working regions. 1 to 34. Okay, and then you can see some red color dots here like Thailand, it shows coming soon. Taiwan, it shows coming soon. Saudi Arabia, it shows coming soon. Mexico, it is showing coming soon. So that means beside these 34 working regions, there are five more regions. One is in New Zealand, you can see here. Uh, AWS regions in Mexico, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, Taiwan are some more regions that will be coming soon. Hmm? These are the places where they have already announced. Already announced means the work has started. Say to construct, to build a data center, they need to first of all build the physical infrastructure, the, you know, building or maybe, you know, something like a go down or something like a big place, a big shelter. Within that shelter, they need to bring all the devices, routers, servers, which is the quantity of these devices will be in thousands and thousands. They need to bring all the devices. They need to bring cables. Okay. They need to make a topology. Topology is the design. Okay. So they need to, build a topology, they need to connect every device. So it may take at least two to three years for them to build a region. For example, if they are building the region in Saudi Arabia, maybe they have started the region maybe this year. So the region will be available by 2025 ending or 2026. But if they started this region, maybe in 2023, hopefully this region will be available by next, next year, ending of the next year. So they are not stopping at 34 regions here, my friend. 34 are working. And how many more to come? Five more to come. So 34 plus 5 will be how much? 39. So hopefully by 2025, Amazon people will have totally 30. Just a second, please. So Amazon people will have totally 39 regions across the globe. Okay, fine. Now, will they stop at 39? No. Once they finish their work in the remaining five regions, they will launch more regions. Maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, maybe seven. It depends on the requirement. Now, how they decide to in which region or in which city or country or place they need to start a data center. You know, they will see the requirement there. See, a continent like Africa, which is having around 50 to 55 countries, there is only one region in Cape Town. A continent like South America, which is again a very big continent, it is having only one region that is somewhere in Brazil. So when you go and see South Africa or Africa and South America, you know, they are famous for different things. Maybe they are famous for football or maybe they are famous for some other stuff. They are not that much famous for this IT, right? Have you ever seen a very big coming, very, a very big company coming from South America or let's say Africa? No. So as of now, there is only one region there. But again, don't get surprised. Next year, they may launch a region somewhere here. They may launch a region somewhere in Argentina. There is a possibility there. So if more companies are coming, if more demand is coming, more demand, more supply. That's a business policy, right? So as of now, 34 regions are working. Five more regions will come. But after these five regions, they will not stop. They can have more. They may start a region in India. One more region in India, let's say somewhere in Chennai or somewhere in Bangalore. 
demand is so much in india my friend literally every it company is there every company is there so maybe two regions maybe for me you know company like amazon they can have at least one more region as of now in in our country so they will simply add more regions so i hope you i hope you understood now how the global infrastructure is you know uh design here they have you know taken some places where there is more requirement where there is more traffic and they have selected those places and they started the data centers in those places so obviously they have to go with the permissions they have to take the permissions from the local governments and they have to like you know buy the land or take the land on lease lease or rent but most of the cases they will simply buy the land because you know it's not easy to move the data center from one place to other place right so in most of the cases they will buy the land Okay, they will spend a lot of money. You know, in Hyderabad city itself, Amazon people have spent approximately 20,000 crore Indian rupees to build their infrastructure. 20,000 crore Indian rupees is huge amount, right? So just imagine 34 regions, how much money they have already spent. By the way, Hyderabad is not the biggest region they have. Mumbai can be bigger than Hyderabad. Singapore can be bigger than Hyderabad. Sydney can be bigger than Hyderabad. So they, they might have spent more money, like say $30,000, 30,000 crores or 25,000 crores, something like this. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to understand here is how these regions are connected with each other. If there is a server which is running somewhere, let's say in somewhere in Japan, and suppose I'm sitting somewhere in South Africa. Can I connect from Japan to South Africa? Of course, we are connected with each other, right? Across the globe, we are connected with each other. So my question here is how these regions are connected with each other. In case if one region is down, we can still connect to the other regions and we can still access our data or access our servers. Now, by the way, why the region can go down? A region can go down because of some national calamities. For example, you know, there is some tsunami or there is some earthquake or there is some flooding or let's say there is a war. Right now you can see there is some war between Ukraine and uh, Russia. So maybe there can be a possibility like your data centers can go down. So it can be natural disasters can happening or maybe due to some, you know, political things or war and all those things, a data center can go down. Okay, but the question is how they are connected, you know. All the regions, what you see now on your screen, all the regions are actually connected by cables. You know this very well, right? Internet is all cable connection actually. So all these regions are connected with each other by using cables. And in most of the cases, Amazon people, they themselves lay down this cable. I repeat, they themselves laid on this cable. And if for some reason, okay, if for some reason they could not lay down the cable, you know what they do? They will take the cable of the internet. You know, internet is all about cable connections, right? Right now we are connected with each other. I'm not sure in which city you are sitting. I'm sitting in Hyderabad. Maybe you're sitting in Hyderabad or some other city or country or continent. You and me are actually connected through cable. Maybe you're using a Wi-Fi connection there, but you know, from your mobile phone or from your laptop till your Wi-Fi router, there is the Wi-Fi connection. But your Wi-Fi router also has a cable coming, right? So everything is connected by cables here. Done? I hope it is clear now how the regions are, where the regions are there and how they are connected. Okay? And on what basis they will start a region or they will establish a region in a particular place based on the traffic or based on the requirement they will start the region they need business it's a business for them right they simply cannot start a region in a place where you know there is not requirement got it now within a region my friend we have something called availability zone every region has availability zone so if the first thing we do once we log in into our account is we select our region let me just go to my aws account probably we'll see how to create aws account in our coming classes probably tomorrow or after tomorrow
So see here, friends, I have successfully logged in into my AWS account, console.aws.amazon.com. This is the link using which you can connect to your AWS account. You should have the account, then you can enter the username and password and you can access. Now see here, my friend. If I just come here, can you see? Right now, I am connected to Northern Virginia region, which is the main region. Then Ohio, California, we can see all these things and you can see Hyderabad and Mumbai. You can see Sydney and Tokyo. You can see Ireland and London, Paris. You can see all the regions here. So if you want to connect to any of this region, let's say I want to connect to Singapore region. I can just click on Singapore. That's it, my friend. Right now, I am connected to the AWS data center, which is there in Singapore. <clears throat> if I want to connect to, let's say, somewhere in uh, California, just go there and click on California. You are connected to California now. It is so easy, my friend. It's not a big deal to select a region. On what basis we need to select a region? That's a different discussion. We will do this. But as of now, how to select a region is very simple. It shows all the regions here. And now I'm selecting my Hyderabad region. So I'm connected to my Hyderabad region. That's it, my friend. So region selection is not a big deal. Our region connection is not a big deal. Okay. But once you connect to the region, what is this availability zone now? Now, once you connect to this region, a availability zone is actually the data center. We cannot say region as a data center. We need to call availability zone as a data center. Every region has minimum three data centers. I repeat, every region has minimum three data centers. Okay, let me just put this in a simple way. For example, imagine my friend, this is your... AWS Global Infrastructure. Hmm? This is the global infrastructure. Now, within this AWS Global Infrastructure, what we have, friends? We have regions. So, let us say this is one region. This is one region. So, we have totally 34 regions. I'm just taking three here. And for example, let me just go with our Mumbai region. And let's say this region as Sydney region. And let us say this one is your Northern Virginia region. Hmm? Fine. So these are some of the regions I have taken here. And we know this very well. Each and every region is connected with each other by using a physical cable. Your fiber optic cables will be there. Undersea cable, underground cables will be there. So using these cables, we'll be connecting all our regions. Great. Connection is also done. Now, what I said here, my friend, within a region, what we have within a region, we have something called availability zone. Availability zone is your actual data center. For example, AWS regions. Let's say AWS data centers. See here, friends. What you see right now on your screen, this one, this is one availability zone. This can be there in any country, any city, wherever. So this is one availability zone. See here, this is one availability zone. This is one availability zone. Inside this availability zone or inside this building, what we have? Inside this building, we have data centers like this. Inside, we have all the devices, all the equipment, right? But from outside, how they look? From outside, they look like this. So the concept here is Amazon people have decided to go with minimum three data centers in each region. How many data centers? Minimum three data centers. But from today, we will not call them as a data center because technically it is called as availability zone. So let's say this is one availability zone. One more availability zone. One more. How many? Minimum three availability zones for sure in each region. So availability zone is a technical term. So let's say AZ1, AZ2, 
and this is our AZ availability zone 3. Can I call them as a data center? Yeah, general terminology is data center, but when you read documents of AWS, they call it as availability zone. So in each region, there are minimum three availability zones. Availability zones, are they connected with each other? If regions can be connected with each other, Mumbai, Sydney, availability zone connection is not a big deal here, right? Because they are in same region. Within Mumbai region, these three availability zones are there. The distance between availability zone 1 and availability zone can be, let's say, 77 kilometers. The distance between availability zone 2 and 3 can be, let's say, 45 kilometers. And between 1 and 3, it can be, let's say, 80 kilometers. That can be the distance. But they all the availability zones comes within Mumbai region. See, when I say Mumbai, it's not only, let's say, Borivali or Lokhandwala or maybe, let's say, you know, Mira Road, whatever things are there in Mumbai. It's not only that particular place, right? Mumbai is a place which has multiple places, multiple sub-places within city like Mumbai, right? Okay, so if AWS people have selected the region as Mumbai, they will select three different locations where they will keep three different data centers and by the way each data center size is bigger than your 15 to 20 football ground i just want to repeat this again and again each data center size is too big to imagine whatever we have seen till now all these are the data centers okay so right now we have three in mumbai and obviously we will have three in sydney wherever they are located but you know, there are few regions where there are four availability zones. But Northern Virginia is the only place where there are totally <clears throat> six availability zones. Northern Virginia is a headquarters. It is a main place from where they started providing services. So they have totally six data centers or six availability zones within Northern Virginia. Now the size of the availability zone, will it be same? It may not be exactly same. For example, imagine in this availability zone, let's say there are totally 77,000 servers. In this availability zone, it can be, let's say, 73,000 servers. Here it can be, say, 80,000 servers. There is a possibility like this. The number of devices will not be exactly same. It can be more or less. What it, but overall, the infrastructure, the team, the management, overall things will look same. Okay, there can be some hundreds and thousands of people working in availability zone one, thousands of people working in availability zone two, and availability zone three. So this is your global infrastructure. Let me just come again, my friend. AWS people have divided the global infrastructure, okay, according to regions and availability zone. And they have given the option to us. They said, you select your region. Then you select your availability zone. Why we should select the region? We know where is our business, right? We know where is our company. For example, if I go with SBI, State Bank of India, there are more than 25,000 SBI branches. Lacks of people are working for them. And they have crores and crores of customers. Isn't it? They have crores and crores of clients there. Now, this SBI people, if they keep their servers in Sydney region, that is possible, right? AWS will not come to them and AWS will not say, your company is in India, why you are keeping servers in Sydney? They will not make any question like this. So, AWS people will simply allow you to create servers anywhere. But you are the cloud administrator of this SBI. You should decide whether to go with Mumbai, Sydney, North Virginia or any other region. So on what basis you decide which region to be selected here. Very simple, my friend. You know what you have to do? The first thing you have to do here is you have to see the latency. The first thing before we decide is, decide a region is we need to select latency. Now, what is this latency? Latency means it is the time period or time taken by your application to respond. It is a time taken for your application to respond. So which company we are working in, my friend? Let's say we are working for State Bank of India, SBI. 
So SBI application is there. They will do net banking. They will connect. You know, whenever you do some transaction through phone pay, Google pay, whatever, literally you are connected to the SBI server, right? Phone pay is connected to SBI server. They need to gather all your details from them. Okay, so SBI server is the busiest. They may have some thousands of servers actually within India, SBI people. Anyhow, you will see latency here. If you go with Sydney, when I pay money through phone pay, my phone pay app will contact my bank server and that bank server is available in Sydney. Or let's say you kept your server in Northern Virginia. Maybe the cloud administrator thought, okay, North, Northern Virginia is the biggest region, so I'll keep the server there. there. There is a possibility, right? But now whenever you try to do some transaction, what happens? From your machine, the request will go to the Northern Virginia region because in Northern Virginia region only, we are running this particular SBA application. So just imagine, my friend, how much distance it has to travel. It will not take days or months or hours or even minutes also. It will take some seconds. But you know, two seconds is also considered as a huge time over the computer network. How much? Two seconds is also considered as more time. So if you keep your servers close to your business, where are your customers? Where are your clients? Within India. So if you keep your servers, maybe in Hyderabad or maybe in uh, uh, Mumbai, it is much more easier for your customers to reach to the SBA application. So 99.9% .9 people who are accessing SBA application or accessing internet, they are not aware of all these things. They just need to like, you know, enter the address and they just need to see the output. But suppose imagine they are accessing the application, but that application or a web server will take around four to five seconds to respond. Maybe today they will, they will access the application. Tomorrow they will access the application. But within one week or five days, they will say, this application is working slowly because it is responding after five seconds. So if the application is kept very far, the latency can be more and the response time will be more. So, you know, things will not work out perfectly. So do one thing as a cloud administrator, you have to decide which region to select. So in this case, Mumbai region is best because, you know, it is very close to our client or Hyderabad region is best because it is close to our clients. So this is one thing. Latency is one thing that we need to see. Okay. The second thing we need to see is cost. Whether the cost is same or not in every region. I repeat, whether the cost is same or not in every region. What is cost? You're using a server. If you use a server, will you pay same money in Mumbai, same money in Sydney, same money in Northern Virginia? Answer is no. For example, if you purchase a mobile phone or a laptop, will you pay same money in Mumbai if you're purchasing a mobile phone or same money in uh, Australia and same money somewhere in America? Answer is no, right? It depends on the country's tax system. You know, normally people who come from Dubai or people who come from USA, they bring some electronic gadgets, right? Like mobile phones, watches, or maybe, you know, laptops and all those things because tax system is much lesser there. If you take a mobile phone for, let's say, 80,000 in India, they may get the same mobile phone for you in 65,000. Same mobile phone, same feature, same company, brand new mobile phone. So in AWS also, my friend, if AWS people have data center in India, the tax system will be different in India compared to the tax system in Australia, compared to tax system in USA, right? So overall, USA regions will charge you less amount compared to India or some other region. Hmm? But now you have to take a strong decision here. For example, let's imagine you have totally 100 TB of data. Hmm? For this 100 TB of data, let's say for Northern Virginia, they are charging $100. Only for example, I am saying $100 here. So they are charging $100 here. But in Mumbai region, they are charging, let's say, $1, $1, $12. Now you have to decide which region to go with, whether to go with Northern Virginia or whether to go with Mumbai. Where are your people? Where are your customers? Your company is an Indian company, right? So here, if you go with the money, if you want to save money, you can go with Northern Virginia. 
much you know money comes at number 2 place for any business the performance should be better if you keep your data in northern virginia maybe it is a bit late in accessing compared to the data that you keep in mumbai so now you have to decide whether to go with latency or cost and i can say in majority of cases my friends you will go with the latency only you will say okay although in mumbai region they are charging 12 dollars extra from me every month i'll still go with this mumbai region because if i keep data in mumbai it will be close to my people close to my customers close to my clients and they will feel the accessing is much more fast got it so selecting a region is based on majorly two things latency and cost first is latency then it is cost and the third one if we can add here is services what services are available what services are available in each region first of all 90% services are available in every region how many 90% not 90% anyway 95% services are available in each region every region offers you same sort of services but you know my friend there are certain services which are not available in every region These services are available only in few regions. Like if I can take example as, you know, we have shopping malls, many shopping malls in uh, any metro city. But do you think every shopping mall is same? Answer is no. There are cer certain shopping malls which may offer a bit more services compared to the other shopping mall. Isn't it? They may offer a bit more advantages or a bit more services to you compared to the other shopping mall. So now you need to decide whether you have to go with the regular services, you have to go with a very special service. Every company, they will go with the services which are regular. There are few companies, they need some special service like let's say artificial intelligence services. AI services may not be available in Mumbai or Sydney, but it will be available in Northern Virginia. Or maybe it is available in Northern Virginia and Sydney, maybe it is not available in Mumbai. So 95 to 96% services will be common everywhere, but there, the new services, the new services will not be there in every region. Whenever they are launching a new service, my friend, they will launch the new service first in the Northern Virginia region. First here. After this, the service will be launched in the different regions if needed. If you want to create a virtual server, a virtual machine or a virtual server this virtual server service is available in all the 34 regions hmm? and how many more are coming five more are coming right so once they are ready to serve the virtual machine service will be available in all the remaining five totally 39 regions in future when they are adding five more regions let's say next couple of years the virtual machine service will be available in the coming five regions also Every region has similar services. But like I said to you, my friend, there are few services which are needed only in few places. Okay. So as of now, if you just decide on the basis of latency and cost, it is more than enough for you to decide which region to go with. Latency is the time taken by your user to reach your application. That is a latency. And the cost is how much money you are spending to run that particular application in that particular region. So according to the country or according to the geographical location, the charges will vary. The charges will be different. This is the way you can select AWS Global Infrastructure. So in AWS Global Infrastructure, we have regions and then we have availability zones. So we have to select the region as well as we have to select the availability zone when we start launching a server when we run a server without selecting a region or availability zone my friend you simply cannot select you can you simply cannot run your application by default some region will be selected here for sure right northern virginia or hyderabad or something but still if you want to change you can change it here and see there are certain regions which are not enabled there are 12 regions that are not enabled for this particular account hmm? like cape town is not enabled Hong Kong is not enabled, 
Melbourne is not enabled. Spain is not enabled. By default, every, every region is not enabled. The old regions may be enabled by default, but the new regions that are added, they are not enabled. So if you want to enable any region, just go to this manage region option. At the end, you can see here. Once you go to manage region here, you can see Hyderabad was also not enabled actually. I have enabled Hyderabad recently. But if you want to enable, let's say, um, Spain region. Let's say you have a business in Barcelona or Madrid. That's your business place. So what you do, you'll prefer your region, right? You already have a region in Spain. So you'll go and prefer that region. So you will enable that region in your account. And then you will use it. How to enable select. And then you have an option here to enable. That's it. So it may be enabled within 5 to 10 minutes and it will be fully enabled within like 12 to 14, 24 hours. But it will be enabled for sure. So now you can select that Spain region and you can run your applications and store your data. The reason for enabling Spain region is our business is in Spain, Barcelona city or Madrid city or any of the cities nearby. Okay, so for that reason you can enable this. But what if my business is in let's say Delhi obviously we have many uh, businesses in Delhi Chennai Bangalore Kolkata these are metro cities right what if if my region is in Delhi or if my business is in Delhi which region I can select here my friend should I go with Mumbai region or should I go with Hyderabad region see here if you go with if your business is in Delhi, here, Mumbai, Mumbai is close, yeah. Hyderabad is also not so far here, right? Maybe some, you know, couple of hundred kilometers different. I can yeah. go with any of this region. But you know what Amazon people have done? They have added one more thing. They said, listen, we have regions, hmm, Mumbai and Hyderabad in India. But, you know, we will have some more things that is called edge location. So, this Amazon people have decided to go with some more sub-regions in a way like edge locations or sub-regions. So, they have added one region in Mumbai, one region in Kolkata. Where is Kolkata here? So, if a company is somewhere in Kolkata, let's say somewhere in Patna, somewhere in Bhuneshwar, somewhere, let's say any of the other cities, like other uh, States like Mizoram or you know Assam or anywhere, instead of connecting from Assam to Mumbai or to Hyderabad, they can simply connect to the Kolkata region. But see, again, this is also not enabled by default. Let me just show you where it is there. So if you go to this place, don't worry about all these things, how to use it and what to do in each and everything. I'll just go to the main. Okay, see here, I am in which region? I am in Hyderabad region as of now. Hyderabad region has how many availability zones? Three availability zones. Okay, when you see the availability zone, you can see AP South 2A, AP South 2B, AP South 2C. AP means Asia Pacific and Hyderabad is in South. So, Asia Pacific South, availability zone A, 2A, 2B, 2C. Are there any additional zones here? Let us check it once. See, there are no additional zones in Hyderabad as of now. We can see only three default availability zones. But if I change my region to, let's say, Mumbai. Now, see here, friends. If I change the region to, if I change the region to Mumbai, by default, there are three availability zones. Okay. But can you see there are two more zones called local zones? Hmm. Are they enabled? No, they are disabled. So, can I enable them? Of course, I can enable here. But one is in Kolkata, one is in Delhi. So, if your business is somewhere around Delhi, Kolkata region, that part of India, then, you know, instead of selecting Hyderabad or Mumbai, you can simply select the nearest region or nearest to data center, not region, nearest data center and nearest zone. And you can start running your application, storing your data there. Job done. So they have simply expanded their infrastructure, right?
but again don't get surprised maybe by next year if they launch one more region in india a country like india deserves more regions so we are talking only about amazon here my friend amazon have two regions one is in mumbai one is in hyderabad google have their regions microsoft oracle ibm they all have their own regions in india they all have their own availability zones in india so it's not about all the cloud services we are simply talking about amazon here you know yesterday i was you know going through a document and this is companies like uh, microsoft google hmm, uh, amazon all these companies the big giants oracle the second biggest campus they have is in india and especially in hyderabad city actually i was going through my city in hyderabad city so obviously they can add one more region here okay so like this you can enable this local zones and you can simply keep your infrastructure in this local zone that is also possible got it friends so i hope it is clear now the aws global infrastructure so they have added all these things here and probably they will simply keep on adding many more things see here friends in the year 2006 when they started they have only one region that is in northern virginia and now in the year 2024 within 18 years they have totally how many regions 34 working regions and very soon it will be 39 so just try to see how quickly the cloud is evolving how quickly the cloud is spreading and these 39 regions belongs only to amazon google have their own regions microsoft their own regions digital ocean alibaba ibm or ikel whatever companies are there they approximately there are 2500 companies that offers you cloud someone like your mnc is like whatever names we have mentioned now some are like small companies which are there in small cities or small countries you know in india we have especially in hyderabad city we have a cloud provider which is quite famous actually now they have go global footprint also this is control s they started their business from hyderabad hmm? this is control s they are providing services to different places now see here if you go to this control s what this is this is operation data center capacity so let me just check the data centers here see they have data centers in mumbai chennai hyderabad noida bangalore kolkata and what you see those buildings those are the data centers every floor they have the you know resources routers firewalls servers and all those things so this is again a very famous company indian based company at, at least it is famous in india and subcontinent actually but now they are planning to move to the global world and they are providing services from different places also okay so these are the mumbai data centers what we, what they have inside the mumbai data centers if you can see i'm not sure you can go inside right now from here okay see here in mumbai they have 2936 racks remember rack hmm? in mumbai there are there are totally five data centers they have data center one and data center two they have totally 5555 racks here it is 1000 racks nearly 3000 and nearly here 2700 so within mumbai how many five six seven approximately fourteen thousand racks are there within mumbai region of control s how many of you know control s you know amazon microsoft google and all those things right control s is known only by people who have you know some knowledge in it or who have already done some cloud computing and all those things okay so this company let us calculate this company approximately fourteen thousand racks and let's say in each rack they have totally 25 devices so they have totally three like fifty thousand devices oh, that's a big big thing my friend and let us calculate one more thing three like fifty thousand multiply by i'll just go with the base here base uh, price let us say two like fifty thousand so the infrastructure cost is around nine thousand crores for them they're not even considered in top 
10, 15, 20, 30 cloud providers across the globe, but still the infrastructure cost is how much? Is it 9,000? Yeah. Approximately 9,000. I'm talking only about the devices, the building, the place, and the other things, the employees, and each and everything. They, it can go up to like 15,000 crores or more than 15,000 crores. So this is about your control S. Okay, this is your AWS. Let me just show you one more here before we can stop. Azure Global. What is Azure? This is your Microsoft product, right? Microsoft Azure Global Infrastructure. Microsoft people have totally 60 regions and there are totally 300 plus data centers. 442K of network, kilometers of network. Oh, that is with Microsoft. But let me just show you the infrastructure. Yeah, they will present in a different way. Now see, here. this is your globe, you can see clearly. Uh, if you come to our country, India, you can see this sky blue color. Normally they use this color here, South India, where is this in South India? They have a branch, they have a region in Chennai, my friend. Instead of selecting Hyderabad or Bangalore, they have selected Chennai. Again, how the local government makes a deal with them, that, that makes a lot of difference, right? So this is Chennai and this is somewhere in central. This is Pune. So see, Microsoft people are operating from Pune and Chennai. They have not selected the actual traditional cities like Bangalore or Mumbai or Hyderabad or some other city. They have selected Pune in this. Year open is in 2015. And let's see Chennai when it is open. They also, it also came into the, that means before actually Amazon started providing services in India, Microsoft already started providing services. Okay. One is in Hyderabad also. That's a uh, availability zone. Okay. Not yet opened actually. See Hyderabad availability zone is coming soon. This is what, this is Microsoft, right? Yeah. Coming soon. They're building it right now. Yeah, yeah, they are building. Uh, they are building the Google actually. Yeah, Google also they are building as well as they are building this ones, Microsoft. So in India, as of now, two regions are available, and one is coming soon, and that is in Hyderabad. So see, this is the way it is developing, my friend. The cloud is simply moving so quick and so fast that you know, very soon maybe a normal person also knows like his or her infrastructure, data, messages, everything is your own cloud. And you know, we are the people who are managing that. We are the administrator of cloud, so we are doing all these activities. So before you do any other activity, you have to know how the infrastructure is built, what is a region, what is the availability zone, okay? And then what is a local zone or edge location? Then it will be easy for you to select anything, and then, you know, you can start designing your network there, storing your data there, running your application and all those. Hmm? Any questions? I'll take questions. But before that, let me just see one more thing. There is a service called latency check. OK, I'll go with latency check AWS. Uh, I hope this will work. It will show, yeah. How far is a particular location from us? I'm sitting in Hyderabad as of now, right? See, from Hyderabad to Kolkata, it is showing 34, I think this is in milliseconds, yeah? 34 milliseconds. Hmm? From Hyderabad till Northern Virginia, it is 233 milliseconds. But I want to see till Hyderabad, how much is is. Okay, this is local zone. If you go to the regions here, mm -hmm. now see here, my friend, 
Hyderabad, Asia Pacific, Hyderabad, it is showing only 18 milliseconds. Mumbai, it is showing 32 milliseconds. Singapore is also quite close, right? So 45 milliseconds. But if you want to go to Melbourne, the latency is 285 milliseconds. If you want to go to Canada, it is 316 milliseconds. So if you go a bit far, your latency will simply increase. Yeah, clearly it shows you. If you go to South Africa, it is showing 370. But the nearest for me is obviously where I am located now, that is in Hyderabad. So this is the latency of your regions and this is the latency of your local zones. Miami, there is a local zone, okay? Like you can see all the all the city names here where there is a local zone. We just saw Kolkata here, but you may see Delhi also here for sure. Okay, so this is the way you can check your regions. Delhi is here. It is showing 162 milliseconds actually. Fine. I hope the concept is clear. I hope you understood how the global infrastructure is designed. Like I said to you, my friend, we have to decide which region to select. AWS will not force us. Okay, and then we have to select the region. Why we have, we have to select the availability zone. Let me just write one more point here. Why we have to select the availability zone here? Let's say, for example, you have totally uh, 100 servers. Can you run all the 100 servers in one availability zone of Mumbai region? That is possible. But what if, if this is down, all the 100 applications are down, right? So what if, if you divide like this, let's say 30, 35, 35. This is called fault tolerance or load balancing. Not load balancing exactly, but let's say fault tolerance. If one data center is down for some reason, remember downtime is a part and parcel of our technology. Whether it is your physical network, on-premise physical network, or whether it is your cloud, downtimes will be there. Downtimes can be there at any time. What happens if there is some, you know, natural calamity? There is no solution for that, right? Remember 2004 tsunami? Was there any solution or is there any solution? Till today, we get some tsunamis in a place like Japan. No one can control those things, right? So if there is something like this, you know, a data center can go down. Some applications can go down for some time. Okay. So for this reason, we have to select different availability zones to run our applications there. Okay, so that's it for the day, friends. Like I said to you, tomorrow I'll be taking some extra things, some other things, but tomorrow I think they will change the link. So if you're interested in joining this session, my friend, they already sent the mail message here in the chat box. I'll just share the numbers here. You can contact with them. Let me just share the message again. Meanwhile, if you have any doubts, any questions, feel free to ask your doubts here. Uh -huh. Contact us on this number. Okay, this is what I got from them. Okay, so next couple of classes, so till Saturday, I'll be taking classes at 7 a.m. only. But after that, we need to move to 6 a.m. because already some people are there. I'm taking classes for them regularly there. So I'll be moving some of you there. And at 7 a.m. next week, I'll be starting the Linux administration class. Next week, probably Thursday. 3rd of September, I'll start the Linux administration. Okay, so that's it for the day, friends. Hope to see you again tomorrow. I'm here for like 30 more seconds. Any other thing we will see. I'll we'll stop the session for today.
Yeah, I just shared my WhatsApp number also in case if you need some other suggestions, some other guidance or career guidance or any other questions and doubts, feel free to ping me on this number so that you know you can interact with me directly. Okay, that's it friends. Yeah, Naresh, thank you. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you again tomorrow with more details of cloud computing. So before I go, I just want to say one thing, my friend, if you have already decided to go with cloud as your career, like I said you before, you have selected a great career. But you know, if you can add cloud with Linux in your resume, that means you're attracting more components towards your resume. You should get the interview call first. Getting a job or not getting a job is how you face your interview. That's a different thing. First of all, you should get an interview call. How you get an interview call? Based on your resume. And if you put AWS and Linux on your resume, that will be a great advantage for you, my friend. Okay. Thanks a lot, friends. See you tomorrow at 7 a.m. India Standard Time. Take care, man.